Hey, everybody, I want to welcome you back to Success Secrets Revealed with your host, Ronald Kuhlman. It's a live stream show. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what the show is about, how we cre created it, introduce our sponsors, then I'm going to bring on our guest today. And you want to stay tuned for this because we have Brent Tyler Hoffman with us. And he is a, re a, re a resilient expert, spiritual health coach, musician. I mean, wait till you hear about all the stuff that he is and has done. He is a, a true testament to being uh, resilient and, and having that type of power. But before we get to that, I want to tell you that Success Secrets Revealed was developed. I have a radio show called Internet Marketing Business Solutions. It's every week at 1 o'clock from uh, uh, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it's literally we have 1.7 million uh, reach. But because of COVID, the radio station isn't um, – manning the station so they're only running reruns so I, I decided to create this show so i could turn around and um have still have the guest experts come on and we can uh get help you people and then i can take out the audio and send it to the radio station and they can push it out to them but the whole goal is to serve not sell we're giving you free information here we might give you a free offer that you can take advantage of but um so that's a little bit of a backdrop and uh, success secrets revealed is like we're going to bring on subject matter experts people who have been there and done that and there is a massive difference between seeking advice and seeking counsel when you seek advice you're just asking people randomly and they may or may not have done whatever it is you want to do and so it's just it's their opinion i mean what do they really know about it when you're speaking when, when you're uh seeking counsel and you're uh, you know working with the mentor or whatever the case may be these people have already done that and they've already been there so they have a much better idea of what it's going to do and what is going to be needed to help you uh, achieve the success you seek so that's the, the purpose of the show. And uh, anyhow, our sponsor is me and my company, RCS Online Solutions. We're a digital marketing company based out of Boston, literally clients around the globe, including other digital marketing companies that hire us to do their work as white label, and they just tell everybody they're doing it. And um, so uh, what we do is we help business owners and entrepreneurs basically attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients. At the end of the day, you can have the best service, the best product, the best websites, the best funnels, the best videos. If people can't find you, they can't even consider you, never mind hire you. So that's what we do. We, we get you right in front of whoever you need to be uh, in front of. So that is a long conversation leading you into the best part of our show, and that's our guests, right? That's what it's all about, uh, delivering value. So our guest today, as I mentioned earlier, is Brent Tyler Hoffman, and I'm going to read his uh portions of his bio now. Brent Tyler Hoffman is a resilience expert, spiritual wealth coach, musical artist, producer, musician, hypnotist, actor, TV host, philanthropist, and a humanitarian. He has trained with Jim Rohn, Les Brown, Dennis Waitley, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, Tim Zimmerman of SM3 Success, and JT Fox, the world's number one wealth coach just that's just to name a few he is highly trained in the area of personal development social dynamics nlp and all around human psychology he has trained advised and inspired teachers ceos entrepreneurs celebrities and everybody in between has had success in all areas of life with all of his training and what he has learned from these phenomenal experts he has gone on to also educate, motivate, and inspire others to overcome hardships and release deep, crippling, limiting beliefs, which allow which allow them to then uh, choose who they want to be. So, help me welcome Brent Brenton Tyler Hoffman. Yay! Hello, everyone. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Excellent. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me on, Ron. Good stuff. Uh, I just read your bio and, you know, like I mentioned to you earlier, your, your bio is uh, rather lengthy and it's extremely uh, impressive. I mean, all the things you've done, you're also, you know, uh, you've, you, you're an author and you're a two-time best-selling author. So uh, there's a whole lot more to you than just yeah. the eye. 
you know, I've talked, yeah, well, I've talked for almost five minutes straight. So I'd love our listeners to learn a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Sure. So, yeah, you know, I've done a lot of stuff. So I, I think that's been more crippling in a way than helpful. I think it's important to hone in on one specific skill and really put all your focus and, and attention and love on it. Um, I get, but again, you know, I, it, it's like, it's like kids, you know, it's like, it's like loving them all <clears throat> equally or the same, you know? So that's, that's how it's been on my journey to, you know, dabbling in different things here and there. And I can't see you anymore. I can only see myself. Yeah. That's designed that way because we are doing the talking, right? So I wanted people to follow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. I, the reason why I was saying that is because there were some technical issues, um, when I was setting up and then even when I was talking to you, the, the screen was cutting in and out and there was interference. So I just wanted to make sure everything was all right there. Um, <clears throat> but back to what I was saying. So, yeah, I've just, I've just done, a, I've done a lot of different things. I've dabbled in, you know, <clears throat> magic and um, all kinds of things, you know, uh, music, musician, uh, play guitar, play the piano, all self-taught. Uh, then I got into, you know, hip hop and became hip hop recording artist and was in this hip hop group called Lost Theory, performed at the House of Blues Main Stage Hollywood, um, <clears throat> you know, did a lot of red carpet events, got involved in charities um, and, and, and the career just went that way. And, and, and then I just I learned a lot about um, PR and, you know, getting myself out there and getting exposure and, and getting noticed by people. <clears throat> That, that, Excuse me. That's excellent. And, uh, you know, that that kind of like brings us around. Uh, you also have had tremendous, uh, you know, you even overcome like four life threatening uh, illnesses. Am I correct in that? Yeah, that's yeah. Probably, well, there was more, but I, I didn't want to overwhelm. <laughs> but yes, yes. Um, the major ones were um, the gangrenous appendicitis and peritonitis. That was pretty serious stuff. Septic went septic shock and literally like pretty much was on the verge of death. And uh, the, the doctor said it was an absolute miracle that the percentages were, were so, the, the odds were so supposedly impossible that they, they had no idea how I was even able to survive it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that was just, that was just the gangrenous appendicitis and peritonitis. And then there was the, you know, the car accident in 1998, my story where I shattered my C6 vertebrae, I was told I would never walk again. And miraculously, 12 hours later, I, I walked away and the doctors were scratching their heads like, how's that even possible? I mean, it's a permanent injury we're looking at here, you know? Yep, uh, go ahead, Brent. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> no, it's, uh, it's all again. Interference. It, hap <laughs> it happens in all different kinds of ways. Um, but yeah, no, that's that. Those were like you know pretty serious stuff. The car accident, you know, shattered my C6 vertebrae, was paralyzed. Um, 1998 Thanksgiving Day was with my family um, on the 405 freeway, and you know my whole world went black. And before wow. I knew it, I was in the hospital attached to an IV and a uh, IV and a breathing machine. And the doctors told me I would never walk again. And 12 hours later, I miraculously walked away. So, um, In 12 hours. Now, now, Brenton, I mean, you know, a lot of what you've, you've already talked about, and I'm going to kind of let you take over in a second here. But, I mean, a lot of this stuff, I mean, people can't even comprehend it. And, and you, you've, you've survived and thrived. I mean, you know, mentally, emotionally. I mean, there are some habits. There are some things that people can do uh, that can – help them i assume but i mean what was it that you know other people would i'm not going to say have used these things as excuses to not but they might not have bounced back or, you know as you have so what are some things that people can do to, to learn from these and please feel free to tell us more about what you went through where you're at now and then that bridge you know it's like an epiphany bridge you know how did you sure. get from where you were to where you are now how much time we got? See, that's why my bio is so long is because I've pretty much experienced out of everyone that I personally know and that I've talked to, my story, there's so much involved. There's so much detail. I've lived 
lifetimes in one lifetime and I'm still alive. And, uh, you know, I'm only, I haven't even, I don't, I mean, I'm going to be 40 years old, August 1st, you know what I'm saying? So that's right around the corner. And so when I look back at my life, all the things that I've gone through and that I've endured and experienced and overcome, you know, they say statistically, most people don't go through that kind of stuff, you know, that soon in life. I mean, there are people, I'm not claiming or believing that I'm the only one. I love hearing other people's stories that I can relate to and find connectivity, you know, in, in relation to each other's stories. I think that's beautiful. Um, but I've been told by the people that I've known in my life and friends and just on my journey, um, people say, Brenton, I, I've never met anybody like you. And I've never met anybody who's experienced like like the like the story that you've gone through and that your story is is absolutely phenomenal. It's like a Hollywood movie, you know? Yeah, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, brother, right? So, some of it is kind of like a, a horror movie. But uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, but you know yeah. how to take you on that hero's journey through these movies, yeah. right? Uh, you know, but what, what you've done and what, you, what you've what you experienced, you know, I mean, it, it, it's horrific, you know what I mean? But the, the at the end, you've persevered and, and you've come out and, and you're shining and you're contributing and you're helping people and you're having success in your own life, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. So uh, that's what I love about this show. We bring on people like you who have just, you know, it, it, like Les Brown says, when you get knocked down, try to land on your back because if you can look up you can get them get absolutely yes, yeah. yes. I, I love that. That yeah, yeah. And you, you also talked uh you said you've trained with uh jim Rohn, and that's huge i love jim Rohn. i listen yep. to him Les brown almost every day uh it's how it got my day the first uh like 20 30 minutes and jim Rohn is talking about you know what happens to us pretty much happens to everybody now in your case you've had multiple of these scenarios but you know other people have had things happen to them where the um, the exact thing that happened might be different, but the mental and emotional and the feelings are the same, right? So when that's said and done, how they use that can either they can allow yeah. it to you know yeah. disable them or enable them. You yeah. have used it, you know, to enable you to a whole nother level. So I'm going to put you on the screen if you could just tell us a little bit about how. You know, you've done that. What 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 was it about you that allowed you? I mean, obviously, you know, we've got to survive, right? You know, until life is over, you know, we're taking our next breath, right? But yeah, to, to go from to to thrive and not survive is you know what you've done, and I'd love to hear more about how. Sure. So great question. So the how is um, it's it. it Again, it, it goes in so many different variations because, you know, like when somebody has a story, they'll have maybe one or two good points where they, you know, they had a horrific event in their life or family member died or drug overdose or, you know, you hear there's a lot of interesting stories out there. And then they have like that, that epiphany, like you were talking about, like that hero's journey, that wake up call um, where they're going to change their life around and they're going to, you know, flip it and they're going to do great things and they're going to help people succeed and all that stuff. And, uh, and Ron, you know, what? I, I, I met you at um, Cervex um, many years ago um, at Manny Lopez's event and uh, heard you speak. And your story is phenomenal, too, man. You know what I'm saying? For anybody who's heard, uh, Ron has an amazing story. He's been through a lot of horrific hardships and challenges and, and, and he's overcome. And he's, he's a true uh, resilient uh, walking miracle warrior such as myself. So I definitely want to, you know give you praise there and, and, and recognition um, and realization that it's not easy to overcome those kind of things. I mean, you've had a pretty amazing life uh, overcoming and, and, and it's all, it's all how we look at it, right? It's all a matter of perception. So we can look at those things as um, that hinder us in our lives and we can look at those our losses or we can literally look at those as gains. And when I look at my life back in retrospect of the things that I've overcome and, and endured and the challenges that I faced and, and, you know, near, multiple near-death experiences and being a mental anomaly and medical anomaly and all these crazy things. I look at it like they're actually wins because when you can survive and, and literally overcome things that where they pronounce you dead or where they tell you it's humanly impossible to overcome and you're like, watch me get through this, you know, that's a win. So when I look back at my life, I used to, there was a time when I was stuck in, in a rotation of losses where I was like, man, I just took another loss. Oh, that was a loss. 
but all the work that I've done on myself with, uh, you know, my coach, Tim Zimmerman, SM3 success out in Las Vegas. I learned to look at things from a completely different angle instead of losses, looking at them more along the lines of gains that everything happened. You know, it was beautifully manifested. It was supposed to happen exactly the way it did. Um, call it a beautiful tragedy, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but it, you know, again, it, it comes down to how you perceive it, you know? So it's Correct. like how you perceive perception. it. Yeah, yeah. It's perception. You can see it as something that, you know, happened to me, or you can see it as something that happened for me. Yeah. 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 Tony talks about that. Yeah. Tony Robbins. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and what you talked about earlier was that that conception, that knowledge, right? Natalie Sushi was on the show not too long ago, and I love how she puts it. She puts it as like that con that uh, co cocoon moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it defines you. I mean, it's like when you kind of like have that rebirth. You know, you go in, you be, you know, you're this a caterpillar. You become a cocoon. You come out, you're a butterfly, and you fly, right? So, uh, yeah, exactly. so yeah, yeah mm. so I love that. You know what I mean? So go on, tell us more. Sure. So where, where, where would you like me? I'm trying to remember where we were at you know, in terms of um, perspective, perception. Yeah. So, you know, you know, they say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And um, that is true. But I, I think that it goes deeper than that. And I don't think I know it goes deeper than that. The truth is, is that perception is in the eyes of the beholder. Right. So everything is perception, everything is interpretation. What you perceive, what you interpret, shapes your world and reality, regardless if it's true or not true, because we create truth to be truth, what it is, according to what we believe that it is, based on our levels of conditioning. So if anybody tells you something, if somebody, family member, friend, loved one, whatever, says that's not true, what they're really saying is, from my vantage point and my perception, what you're saying is not resonating with my level of belief. So therefore it's not true. Nice. Nice. I love it. That, that kind of like brings it home, makes it uh, a little bit clearer, but uh, so go on, tell us a little bit more. Now, what are you doing now? I mean, you've gone through all this stuff and we've pretty much covered it uh, and we can certainly go back because we can never cover it fully, but we don't need to stay stuck in the negative. I like to move towards, you know, what are you doing now and how did you do it? So what are you doing now? How, how are you helping people now? Well, as of now, like right now, as we speak, um, you know, I, I like to say, I, you know, I've been in a meditation kind of state, you know, I've been, you know, really taking this time. And when they tell us to go in or stay in, you know, or stay home or whatever, I go in, like go inward, and do a lot of meditation, a lot of, uh, you know, praying and, 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 and just, you know, connecting to God and, and, and just really taking that time, because I think it's really easy to fall off track and, and to forget to do those things and those simple disciplines are what um, allow us to, you know, become stronger in our faith and allow us to be able to be more resilient in our lives. Um, so as of right now, I, you know, I'm really just taking it easy and doing those things and, and just being, you know, I've just been mainly and mostly staying home. But uh, as of to answer your question, after everything that's happened to me, like I said, there's been a lot of dips, right? So there's a lot of uphill, you know, successes and downhill perceivable losses or whatever you want to call them. Um, and so I have, um, you know, I've obviously I'm, have a coaching and consulting company, Harmonic Consulting. Uh, I've helped a lot of people succeed and overcome challenges. Uh, most of my work uh, over the years was uh, given away in philanthropy and humanitarianism. Um, so I was just, you know, con I, I was for, for the longest time, I was helping people that were in dire need and were in situations where they could not, they, you know, they didn't have any money or they were genuinely and sincerely struggling. And I was just really in a giving state, you know, just in serving constantly. Um, and I, I think that that really helped me to become more successful because it allowed me to, to really brand myself and to really build myself and, you know, when I built my company, um, you know, I did everything for free because I really wanted to build that credibility. And a lot of people, you know, take that for granted. It takes years to, to build credibility for people to trust you and to know who you are. 
That's all true, and I, I love it. Uh, if you, I mean, there's a, a, most of the people who are listening here today are business owners, entrepreneurs, or those who would like to be, right? Uh, that's yeah. what we kind of cater to. Obviously, there's anybody's welcome to listen and learn. But uh, so if you could give three tips to somebody who was either looking to start or, you know, to start, grow, or launch, or, you know, scale their business, what would be three tips that you could give business owners or entrepreneurs? Sure. It's just like business owners that are just starting off? It could be a business owner that's just starting off, a business owner that has been in business for, let's say, 12 to 18 years. He's had some okay. success and he wants to scale. Somebody who's been in business for five years and wants to scale from there. And the tips can be, you know, one or more, you know, the tips can apply to one or more of those categories. But uh, yeah, those are the basic. Okay. So we'll start with the first one. So for somebody who's just getting into business that inspires to want to be an entrepreneur or succeed in that area, I would say what I just said, um, you know, to really put yourself out there and to, you know, work for free at first, you know, and build that credibility, uh, personal credibility, brand uh, awareness, brand credibility, um, and, and then and then really help people and get uh, get massive results. You know what I'm saying? And um, and get uh, testimonials, uh, very powerful. You know, genuine testimonials from people, video or written or both, um, and you just build from there. You know what I'm talking about, Ron? And then people they see that you've obviously are the real deal. You, you know, you, you walk the walk, you talk, you know, you, you match the walking with the talking, you've helped these people. And then once you've built that credibility, then people will see that, then you can raise your value and then you actually see more value in yourself. Um, unless you get stuck in a charity trap, which uh, can't, is not always a good thing. Um, if you're too stuck in a charity, there has to be a balance between charit charitable giving and also receiving financially as well. So that's for the first person. Um, for a business owner who's been in business for five years, 18 years, whatever, I would say um, don't do it yourself. Um, no matter how confident you think you are, no matter how good you are at something, I don't care, delegate it. Uh, I learned that uh, years ago, but, uh, but I, I heard it again reintroduced in my life with uh, JT Fox, world's number one wealth coach. It's, it's all about um, you know delegating uh, because uh, you free up your time. And when you have more time, uh, then you have more freedom and you're able to do the things that you love to do. So it's important to constantly be um, outsourcing or delegating uh, your lifestyle. Um, and even the things you're good at delegate and even the things you, you actually the things that you're not good at, you should you should definitely delegate. And then even the things that you're good at also delegate. So the more you're delegating, obviously, the more successful you'll be. But that requires a lot of financial capital. So for people who are well, um, uh, you know, very successful financially and have positioned themselves properly, and then they're and the, and and they're liquid for that, then they're able to delegate properly. Now for people who don't have a lot of money starting off, they can delegate. They could, you know, do different things, right? So they could, um, if they don't have the money, they could uh, barter and trade. There's ways around it, and even if you have the money and you want to put it in somewhere else, you can still barter and trade. There's so many different ways of, of there's, you know, there's, there's so many different ways of financial capital. Uh, it's not just money. I love it. And, and what you're talking about, I, I, I tell my clients all the time, learn it, do it, delegate it, learn it to the point that you know what you need to do and um, learn, do it. So you get a fundamental understanding of how it is, but then you have to delegate it. And because you have to delegate it, but um, because it frees you up, if you're doing something that takes 10 hours of your time, say you're creating a logo, uh, whatever you create is going to pale in comparison to somebody who specializes in that. They'll do it for 100 bucks, $75, $150, whatever it is. But in that 10 hours, five hours, whatever it is, you could have gone out and made 20 calls. And in those 20 calls, you you know, let's say your program is, you know, the lifetime value of your client is $5,000 and you close three. There's $15,000 that you made, but, you know, 
or you know in your mind you know you saved 150 because you didn't pay somebody to create the logo but you really lost 15,000 because of the lost opportunity so i love what you're talking about i mean people, yeah people well, automation yeah automation delegation if you want to break it down to two things i think the more you automate your life and the more you delegate it that's those that really are the two keys to massive success yeah i mean people are just in such a they're just stuck in such a pick it up put it down mode they just don't get it man and then when you try to talk to them they look at you like you got three heads or you're insulting them so you really <laughs> yeah that's true. i can't even tell you how many uh, you know i i i my own i have my sister my brother I'm, my brother tom i have you know a couple of people who've actually unfriended me i mean this wow. stuff is crazy man. yeah <laughs> Well, also, too, I wanted to, to let you know, too, um, change up the subject a little bit, but I'll get back on it in a moment. Um, in terms of what I do, also, I've been doing a lot of um, uh, research, so uh, market research um, and list compilation, a little bit of lead generation. But mainly, um, I learned a technique many, many years ago in, in a secret private marketing group, right, that a lot of people don't know about. Um and, and, and it was a very, very uh, overlooked uh, thing. But I, I was looking into misspelled keywords at the time. And then I forgot about it and I looked at it and learned some strategies about, you know, uh, people who have domains that forget to buy the .com or the, I mean, the .org or the .net. Um, and then if you see that, you purchase them because then you could actually get a percentage of their traffic over to you. Um, and, 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 and it's, it's a fair game in, in that, in that marketing world or when it comes to domains, because, you know, that's why they ask you, do you want to buy the .net or the .org? And a lot of times you should buy all those. But anyway, so I was looking into that, stopped it for a while, then opened up some books, looked into it again. Um, you know, my, my notes that I wrote down and started practicing these strategies, um, you know, a couple years ago, about two years ago. And, um, found some domains, some misspelled keywords that actually that nobody had. And I and I um, they're parked right now and they get millions. I kid you not. They get millions of monthly targeted visitors every month. Well, and that is great. Now, <clears throat> I love how you talked about that. And we've mentioned this before. So yeah, talked about that. Yeah, this this is a you know this is something that people need to look at and, and definitely understand. But tell me, let's say they they get to a point where they understand it, or even if they don't understand it, just you know, get a cert, uh, you know, a, you know, a high level view of it. Uh, how can they monetize that? What's the bottom line? Sure, great question. So, and I, you know, I reached out to you. We talked about this as well too. I know you you've been busy, and and I I've shared this with. Um, you know, a few people, you know, I, I think that it's hard to, to, to see how it is unless you can actually see like the real numbers in real time in front of you. And I could provide that and show that to people. But how you monetize it is you find somebody again. Remember, we talked about automation and delegation, right? So if we automate the process by see, I'm no expert in building websites. I can build a website. I built my own website. I could do a lot of different things, but it's time consuming. So if I find somebody who's a wizard, right, that I'm not, um, then they build the website and I find an SEO wizard such as yourself, Ron, then you monetize it. How do you monetize it? Well, it's simple. If you build a Walmart in the desert and you don't have any advertising or any marketing, nobody sees that Walmart, correct? So, yep. But if you do advertising properly and marketing properly and, and the, the SEO is good and people know where that's at and you build a map for it, then all that traffic or percentage of that traffic goes to that Walmart. Well, it's the same thing with those domains. I own these domains. They get, million a month, they get millions of monthly targeted visitors every month to the keywords so i purchased the right so i purchased the domain with those keywords that's why keyword research is so important i think people underestimate the power in keyword research so i was doing that for a while you know dabbling in a lot of different things and i looked into that and i have i have um you know i'm the owner of a misspelled 
keywords that are huge. I mean, I own MUNM.com, the artist MM. I own the misspelling of that. I own, um, you know, YourTubeVideo.com. I own that. It gets like, I forgot last time I checked, it gets like 11 something million monthly targeted visitors. I own, you know, I mean, I did, I really did my research, you know, um, consulting.com, the big, big consulting.com company. I own the misspelling keyword to that, you know, because I did my research, you know what I mean? So there's ways, there's ways to monetize that where you could purchase the domain and, or you could sell it to somebody or you could build websites and get a percentage of that traffic. I love, I love it. And, uh, you know, it, it's all about being creative and innovative. You know, if you don't make your own products obsolete, somebody else will. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and right now we're going through this whole COVID thing, whether whether or not you agree with what's going on. I certainly yep. don't. I think the response is massive overkill. But um, <laughs> forget yeah. about personal uh, feelings. The last time we had a major correction, so to speak, was 2008, 2009. And, uh, but out of that came like Lyft, Uber. Uh, out of that came Airbnb and, you know, you know, literally dozens of other ideas and concepts that people used to just propel themselves to success. So, you know, you got to be innovative. So I love what you're talking about. And yeah. In learning different ways, so you, you get traffic coming there, but are, are people actually purchasing things? I mean, you're you're getting people there. So I assume, let's say you have a website that is, um, you know, target or you know, target near me or whatever the case may be, and if you can create some type of affiliate program with them. And then yeah. somebody clicks on, you know, batteries or shampoo products or whatever it is, and then it links through to their site, you know, you're going to get a commission on any, every product. And if you literally have three, four, five, ten, a hundred thousand people a month going through there, yeah. even, even if you're only getting two or three percent, I mean, you're making, you know, tens of thousands a month potentially yeah. yeah that's what i was telling you yeah so you can do it from an affiliate standpoint you could actually do it as um you know build the websites yourself which we talked about and and have um you know uh have the seo involved and have the website built and, and do it that way and then um so you know it, it it really you could do a little bit of both you could do one or the other it it, it really is um you know, the possibilities is endless and I, it's a very miss, um, it's a very miss overlooked um, thing. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people are, when they do their keyword research, they're looking at things that actually are spelled correctly. You know what I mean? And so um, I think people forget that people genuinely misspell things or they accidentally misspell things. You know, uh, they and they blame their chubby fingers for getting in the way when it has nothing to do with their chubby fingers. You know, um, but anyways, yeah. So, you know, that's uh, that's that's something that I also do amongst everything else. And so I have these I have these domains parked, and I'm just looking for you know, life is a, is a conceptual opportunity. And um, you know, JT Fox talks about how you know home. Um, Games are not one uh, off of home runs, but off singles and doubles. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So the big games in life. And so. So I love it. I mean, you, you've talked about how people can overcome. I mean, you know, what you've gone through, through all these different medical things and your business things is, you know, like I said, it, it's the makings of a horror movie. Never mind a drama or a best selling movie, certainly not a hallmark, but you've overcome that. You've also overcome several business, uh, you know, to me, a business never fails. You know, you just you just figure out what doesn't work. Right. And uh, and then you move sure. forward and you try it, test it and tweak it. Right. Uh, so it's all a matter of really it comes down to a matter of perception. Am I correct? And yeah, exactly. Right back to perception. It's all about perception. Like I said, you can look at things for as losses. Or you can you could choose your losses as gains, or you can look at your gains as I mean, it's all how you perceive it, really. And there will be losses in life, like serious losses. You will, 
uh, I tell people that I meet, like if they say, oh, I can't relate to your story. I've never gone through something like that. And I say, well, you know what? One day you might, you know, and and and, and it's up to you to decide how you want to perceive it. I love it. Uh, in closing, is there anything sure. you would like to say or offer people? Yeah, I like to I like to give everyone five steps. Write this down. So in order to overcome anything, to get through anything um, and be resilient, um, for one, you want to have faith. Faith is the cornerstone. Um, it's what puts everything together. Without faith, nothing happens. Um, I think everybody has faith. I think uh, even doubters have faith. I know that sounds wait. You're like, wait a second, Brett. Doubters have faith. Yeah, it's uh, it's called negative charged faith. But everything is faith. Does that make sense? So it starts with faith. Um, faith. Uh, if you're able to have faith, then two is that leads you to forgiveness. And if you could forgive yourself and you could forgive others for what they perceivably have done you wrong, wrong again, that word perception, if you could perceive, perceive them what they've done wrong to you and you could forgive them, then you could be more grateful in your life where you actually have gratitude. Now you step into gratitude, you're grateful. And when you have that gratitude, then and only then are you more likely to accept the situation that appears bad, makes sense, or things that may appear wrong in your life. Um, you just accept things as is, and and being more accepting leads you to the final, which is peace, uh, the fifth piece of the puzzle, which is peace, which allows you to have more peace in your life, which you are more likely to maintain and have more strength, which actually allows you to be more resilient. So without faith, there isn't forgiveness. Without forgiveness, there isn't gratitude. Without gratitude, there isn't acceptance. And without acceptance, there isn't peace. And what is most people trying to do in life? They're trying to get to that fifth piece, peace. But you can't have peace without faith because faith is the cornerstone that makes all the pieces come together. Wow. I love it. I love it. Now, uh, tell us how people can, uh, I mean, that to me is, you know, it's just so right on. I mean, it kind of like stunned me for a second there. But uh, it's in my book, too, that I've been writing and waiting, you know, it, it, everything has been a long drawn out process. But, you know, things things are happening. You know what I mean? Like I was just featured in um, Influential People magazine. If, I don't know if you or if you saw that. I wrote that in. But, um, you know, um, got it actually right behind me right here. I can anyway, see it. There. Yeah. Tell us about that. You know, tell us about that. Yeah. Who's that guy? Right. Yeah. So <laughs> I was featured on the cover of Influential People magazine, uh, considered to be one of the top uh, influential resilient experts in the world. So uh, that was a huge honor. Um, and, you know, I, I was featured in JT Fox's success stories. Results don't lie. I was featured in that overcoming with my life story and resilience and everything. So I'm honored to be a part of that as well as many other successful people. And I was in Eric, Zuli, Eric Zuli's book, uh, The Influence Effect. And you know, and so are you, you're in that book as well too. And we don't even know, I mean, they said it was out and then it hasn't come out yet. You know, we don't really know what's going on with that. It's a big mystery to us, but- uh, I love it. I was the uh, online marketing superhero of the year. I got the award. Yes, I don't yes. Care. Uh, I've gotten so many awards and, and so many articles and stuff for- uh, Yeah, for Brazilian Soldier of the Year Award. Yeah, we're both winners. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and I love it. And but what's so funny is when we got up on the stage, you know, there was there was literally five, six hundred people in the audience. But it was like right when they were passing out something. So everybody was focused on yeah. the waiter or the waitress. No, I ordered this. No, I ordered that. Right. So it was like, oh, my God. You know, I know. It, was, it was chaos. It was just so crazy. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But but he put on an, an amazing event. And yeah. you know, what I love about these type of events, and, and I kind of go back to it. And, you know, I'm not, you know, we are who we are and, and we do what we do. Uh, but we think differently. We feel differently. And it's not to say that anyone is better than anyone That's true. else. That's true. Yeah, yep. and, and it's like when I go down this road, I have to put that disclaimer in because some people say, oh, you're putting us down or something. I'm not. It's just like people think and feel and act differently, and as a result, they get different results. People so, get offended not by what you say, but what but what doesn't match their cognitive bias or cognitive dissonance. That's what it is. They get upset because it's not a match to their belief system. Yeah, and, and somehow, you know, you're insulting them. But uh, so uh, – 
you know, we literally, you're like three or 5% of the population that wants to be an entrepreneur, that wants to try, that wants to do things. And, you know, we fail more often than we succeed, but it's never a failure. It's always a learning lesson. If it's a failure, you quit, you, you know, you go get a job at, you know, McDonald's or something, right? Yeah. But, um, or somewhere else. And even if you're making five, you know, 10 times the money you make at McDonald's at the end of the day, so what, right? But because um, it's never about the money. It's always about the service, right? You serve well, yes. yourself. You serve exactly. people. Yeah, you got to serve people at a higher level. They know. They can feel your authenticity. If you're just in it for the money, you know what I mean? There's so many shots. It's a balance. It's a it's a perfect balancing act, I call it. And they say, like, you know, I've heard people say balance is bogus, you know, yin and the yang, all that stuff. But really, I think what happens is we we us human beings have a tendency to live in extremes. We either do something too much of something or too little of something. Once we receive something or manifest something, we are not happy and then we want to give it away or sell it. And then we end up getting the upgraded version of the very thing that we gave away. I mean, we're constantly contradicting ourselves. We're constantly living in this repetitive cycle of incongruence. And um, I shared this with, um, um, I, I, I've done many, many interviews and, and uh, podcasts, radio shows and all that stuff. And I'm trying to remember the actual interview that I was on, but uh, it was uh, Men of the Future, um, I believe was the title is what it was called. And it was about um, gender dynamics with uh, men and women and how we think or whatever. And um, uh, uh, Miss Crawford, I can't I can't think of her name her first name right now for some reason, and I'm just drawing a blank. But uh, Joan great Joan uh, Joan Crawford? <laughs> no, not Joan Crawford. I have her book here. Give me a moment. I'm drawing a blank. It's um. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, I just can't think of her name right now. Great lady. Um, but uh, we did an interview, and we were talking about that. We were talking about because uh, she was asking me my perspective on the difference between men and women. And I understand a lot about, you know, psychology and gender dy and just dynamics and uh, gender, the way people think, uh, you know, just just the mind in general, you know, and a lot of people are are predictable, you know, in their behavior. And Tony Robbins talks about that. You know, there's certain patterns in, in people. And, and, and behavior. And I, I think but when it really comes down to it, we all truly want the same thing, even though we're all different. We all want we all want um, acknowledgement. I don't care who you are. Everybody wants to be acknowledged for something. Even the people who say they don't want to be acknowledged, they do. Yeah, I love it. And I was just literally watching this, this series. I almost never watch TV, but I was with someone and we started watching this series and it's from a Canada and uh, this person's ex-wife you know they're battling back and forth right and this person's <clears throat> ex-wife said you know he's like what do you want more money what do you, you know they're, they're arguing back and forth on uh, custody issues and all this stuff and she yeah. said I want more respect yeah I yeah. want you to acknowledge me. Well, you built your success. I was home taking care of your child. I was home taking care of your ironing, your food. I, you know, that that allowed you to focus on what it is you wanted to do. I just want respect yeah. and acknowledgement. He, on the other hand, was, you know, everything was transactional. You know, you want more money, you want more this, you yep. want more that, I got to do this, I got to do that. It was strictly transitional. But for her, it was, I just want the acknowledgement. Just give me the respect that I contributed. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's, what, that's what everybody wants. I think from deep down inside, again, back to perception, what we view or perceive through our judgments um, from the most heinous criminal you know, down to the freaking Dalai Lama, right? In, in terms of extremes, right? <laughs> Someone like, might like, say up to the Dalai Lama, right? not down right. to the Dalai Lama. So I like to say everybody has a bad day. And look, I, I have this uh, philosophy and this mindset that I truly believe I've, I've always had it ever since I was younger. Um, and I, 
I've, actually, I've written it down. Like I said, I'm in the process of writing my book. It's been a long journey and I really hope to get that, you know, get that done soon. I've been saying, I've been talking about that and people say, Brenton, you need to put that book out. I was like, I know it's, it's a process. You know what I mean? Um, it's like, I, I think that's the killer in life is when you're uh, a perfectionist. That's one thing I wish I could, I'd really like to be able to let go of, you know, is, is being a perfectionist. But, you know, it has its qualities, right? If you're a perfectionist, you know, you have something great, but it's better to just put it out, you know, get the feedback later, just keep putting things out. But anyway, so I don't get too much off topic. I'm trying to remember what I was talking about. <laughs> that happens from time to time. Um, yes. So in terms of perception, in terms of um, human beings judging people, the reason why we judge is because there's something in our life, there's a void. That very person or thing that we're judging, it's because that thing that we're judging, we don't have in our own life. Or we have too much of it and we're not taking responsibility, so we're putting it on to somebody else. So it's one or the other. So I've also learned, I mean, I, I, people are, they fascinate me because really deep down inside, we all want love. We all want appreciation. We all want acknowledgement. We all want understanding. We just want to know that somebody cares about us. And I think that, you know, so when people are mean to people or when they judge them or they say hurtful things to them, what they're, what they're, they're really are doing those things to themselves behind closed doors and they'll never admit it or realize it. But once they do realize it, that's when their life will truly change. So that I do know 100% for sure. I that's love what it. we do. I love it. And it really comes down to awareness. You know, you need to be aware yep. of who you are, what you're doing, what your triggers are, where they came from. And you need to start addressing them. And some of them came from a long time ago. And, you know, once you can free yourself from that crap, you know, then you can just move on to the future. Absolutely. Am I correct? Yep. You are correct, Ron. I love it. Uh, all right. So in closing, you know, we've been here 46 minutes and I love it. I hope people, you know, listen to the whole thing because I, I, I almost, you know, I honestly feel like the last 15 minutes has been transformative. But um, transformational. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, But is there anything in closing? I'm going to put you on the full screen. Is there anything in closing that you would love to tell our listeners and viewers now and in the future, including any type of how to contact you, any, you know, sure. information, whatever. Sure. All right. So I like to, in closing, I like to say this, everyone, uh, never give up or give in to the voice inside your head telling you to quit before your big win. You know, always, always just continuously keep moving through no matter how much gets in your way. I know as cheeky as that sounds like you just eventually something has to give, right? Like, things will happen for you. It's all about, and just step into that resilient power. You know, once you claim that power, then you will no longer be powerless and you'll be able to do the things you do. As of I, to, yeah, thank you. Uh, as of how to contact me, Brenton Tyler Hoffman. I'm the only one in the world. You can Google me, the, you, you know, um, but my website is brentontylerhoffman.com. And on the screen, as you can see, that's with two Fs and two Ns. I have to stay... Uh, be clear on that because a lot of people accidentally misspell it and put one in and it's a very common mistake and I've been dealing with that ever since freaking kindergarten you know uh, just my whole life but um yeah brentontylerhoffman.com and you could check it out as of for my services um anybody who is listening in today um I will offer you a complimentary um no charge uh we'll do a um strategy session or discovery session, figure out what's going on in your personal life or in your business and see what we could do about helping you get to the next level. I love it. But here's a little bit of advice. If you can get Brenton Tyler Hoffman with one N at the end, I don't have my glasses on, but uh, so let's say you get one N at the end instead of two, maybe even get three. So, you know, get that yeah. I thought about that. Yes. No, definitely do it. And then just forward it to the two. 
Anyhow, if somebody types in three because they got that fat finger mistake, <laughs> yeah, true. For you, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to back to the misspelling keywords. Yes, yes, exactly. yes. Absolutely. Talk about it, brother, man. Be about it, right? So you know, people. I've been dealing with it forever. Well, get the one with the, with the one because I can't believe there's too many Brent, Brenton, Tyler Hoffman's with one N. So no, get. no, no. The Brenton Tyler Hoffman. I, I've, I've not. Brenton Tyler Hoffman with one in. I, I don't know. I haven't. I've. Listen, I haven't seen it. If you don't want to get juiced when you get off this call, go and buy it. Otherwise, somebody who saw this is going to go buy it, and then they're going to charge you to get it. Okay. So. Oh, go, I, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. No. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get it now. Get, you know, get it in the next like 20 minutes. So get that URL and then you can just forward it to your. Well, account. you know what? You know what I don't understand. I find it fascinating is why they spell it with one N when you can clearly see there's two N's on it. I know it's an easily misspelled. Uh, no, nobody sees that. You see that because you know it. Me, I see Hoffman, M A N. I'm done. M A N. Yeah. You know, yeah. What have I got to put on my glasses to see? <laughs> no, sure, that, totally. but, so you got to understand your audience. What are they looking for? How do they perceive things? So, you know, right. at the end of the day, it's never ever about you or what you perceive or what you think. It's all about them. So no one totally. is seeing two ends. Everyone is seeing one end. So you've got to get that URL before someone else gets it and juices the heck out of you. And then, then <laughs> done, brother, done. Cool. It brother, cost, man. brother, it's gonna cost you twelve bucks a year, right? And then you just redirect it. So when someone types it in, poof, they end up at the two ends. Yeah. Got it. I, I'd get the one with the three ends too, because they might just hit it by mistake. Get the one with the three ends. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Why not? I, should, I should just get a bunch of my name and different misspellings. So, you know, it's a great idea. And 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 I do practice what I preach. I, I was just more focused on looking for other businesses with misspelling at the time. I wasn't looking at my own name. But again, right, we, we all do that. So for sure, man. Thanks for the advice. And, and, and uh, I will do it for sure. I love it. And uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm just going to close this out. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Ron. Yeah, thank you, everybody. This has been amazing, and I hope you listen. The whole ep the whole interview was, was great, but the last, like, 15, 20 minutes was really insightful and educational. So I hope you really tune in. You listen to the whole thing because uh, uh, Brenton Tyler, two ends, not yeah. one end, he has so much to offer. However... If you type in one end, it's going to get redirected to the two end. But please wait 15 minutes because we're about to buy that form. Okay. So, right. and one, uh, one more thing before I go, because I know it's been a long show and I think, thank you. Um, you guys can check me out too on um, Harmonic Consulting on Facebook and you could see my testimonials on brentontaylorhoffman.com. It's all there as well, too. Um, I have other links on itsmyurls.com. It's just called it's my URLs, right? Dot com forward slash Brenton Tyler. And you can check out my stuff there. But my stuff's really easy to navigate on my Facebook page. You can check it out. Um, the reason why I, I mentioned that is because you could actually see the testimonials. And I have testimonials from people who are actually on this show. So I, you know, I actually I got a review or a testimonial from uh, Tucker Bearden, you know. And so um so well, yeah, you know, and, and you've been amazing, and, and people really need to listen to this show. And thank you. There's going to be a lot of links in, in the description, and then right. connect with you. So thank you, uh, everybody. Again, this is Ron Coleman coming to you from Success Secrets Revealed. You need to listen and uh, follow Brenton Tyler Hoffman with two ends, and uh, you know he's amazing. He's overcome so much. Uh, medically, business-wise, he's a two-time best-selling author. You need to look out, reach out to him and connect. Again, our uh, sponsor is RCS Online Solutions. We help business owners and entrepreneurs much like you attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients to achieve success. At the end of the day, you can have the best websites, the best 
message, the best service, the best product. But if people can't find you, they can't even consider you, right? So let's just keep it real. Love you all. Hope you have a great day.